morning, boys and girls. I hope you had a great week. We are going to talk today about the Last Supper. Welcome to Sunday School. And in your Bible, if you would turn to page 462, we can get started. So we're going to read this together, and then there's going to be some clips that we'll, we'll kind of dive into a couple of things throughout the story to give it a little bit more meaning, okay? So Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world. He wanted to share his last Passover meal with his 12 closest friends, the disciples. Jesus loved his friends and wanted to show them his love in a very caring way. This is a story found in the Bible and tells us about a special meal Jesus had with his friends, the disciples. It's a meal we celebrate today to remember Jesus and how he died and rose again to save us. Jesus said to his friends, I want to eat the Passover feast with you before I go away. Go and get it ready for us. Look for a man carrying a water jar and follow him. He will show you where to go. His friends found the man and followed him. The man went into a house. This was the house Jesus would be coming to for the meal. Jesus' friends knocked at the door and waited. Do you have a room for Jesus, they asked. Yes, I have a room upstairs. Everything you need will be ready. I knew Jesus would come, said the man. He took them downstairs to a big room. They got dinner ready with baskets of flat bread and wine made from grape juice. Soon, Jesus arrived with his other friends. They went upstairs to have dinner together. Jesus took the flatbread and broke it. They shared it. They shared the grape juice too. Jesus said, whenever you do this, remember me. In church, we call this communion. As the friends got ready for the meal, Jesus put water in a large bowl and knelt down on the floor. He wanted to wash the feet of each disciple. When it was Peter's turn, Peter said to Jesus, you will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, Peter, you don't understand what I am doing now, but you will later. Peter loved Jesus so much that he said, then don't just wash my feet, but my head and my hands also. Peter wanted to be as close to Jesus as possible. This is a story written in the Bible by one of Jesus' helper called John. He saw everything that happened. Jesus and his helpers had a special meal together. Then Jesus wanted to teach them that a leader looks after others. He got a bowl of water and a towel I'm going to wash your feet, Jesus said. His friends were surprised. Jesus knelt down and began to gently wash their dirty feet and dry them with a towel. Peter was upset. Why are you doing a servant's job? You are our important leader, he said. But Jesus was showing them that a good leader isn't too important to do anything to other people. It was Peter's turn. You will never wash my dirty feet, said Peter. But I'm being your true friend, said Jesus. Then wash my face and hands as well. I want to learn to look after other people the way you do, said Peter. As they were eating, Jesus sadly told his, 
told his disciples, Soon one of you will betray me. One of you will tell people who don't like me where I am so they can take me away. This upset the disciples, and each one said, It's not me you're talking about, is it? When Judas said this, Jesus gently replied, Yes, Judas, you will betray me. This is a story from the Bible about a man who loved money more than anything else. Judas was one of the 12 disciples Jesus chose. He looked after the money bag of coins Jesus gave away to very poor people who could not work. Judas saw many miracles when Jesus touched them. Blind people could see, lepers were healed, and people who had never walked stood up and jumped for joy. Jesus taught Judas and his friends, love God with all your heart and love others as much as you love yourself. Judas loved Jesus, but he loved money more. The temple leaders wanted to get rid of Jesus, so Judas offered to show them where to find him if they paid him some money. They gave him 30 silver coins. Then Jesus picked up a loaf of bread. He blessed it and gave some to each of his friends, saying, Take this bread and eat it. This is my body. Then Jesus picked up a cup of wine. He gave thanks and said, Drink this. It is my blood, which I must give up so the sins of the people may be forgiven. You may have noticed that in church, sometimes people eat some bread and drink some red wine. Why are they doing this? They sometimes call it communion service or the Lord's Supper or breaking of bread service. At the last meal Jesus ate with his disciples before he was crucified, Jesus gave thanks, took some bread, and broke it into pieces. Jesus said to his disciples, This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me and what I have done for you. The bread was to be a symbol of Jesus' body, which would be broken when he died on the cross. Breaking bread like this was to remind us that Jesus suffered and died so we could be forgiven for all the wrongs that we do. Jesus took a cup of red wine and gave thanks for it. Then he said, This is my blood poured out for many, sealing the new agreement between God and man. He passed the cup around to the disciples for them all to take a drink. The red wine was to remind them of the blood Jesus would shed on the cross to pay for the price of our forgiveness. It was a sign of the new promise God was making so he could be friends with him. 2,000 and more years later, Christians still share bread and wine together, remember, remembering Jesus dying for us. We'd like you to join us in our reenactment of communion. We have a flattened piece of bread here, and you can use like a cracker, and this is supposed to represent the unleavened bread, which is bread without yeast. And then we have... Um, juice, you can use like grape juice or cranberry juice for our wine. All right, so what did Jesus do next? He took the bread and he said, this is my body, take and eat. So he, he broke the bread. 
right? And he mm-hmm. gave a piece to each of his disciples. And he said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me for what I have done for you. Take and eat. That was a big piece, Carson. (laughs) And then what? Then we have the wine, right? Do you remember what the wine, what he said with the wine? Or what it represents? It represents his blood. Right. So Jesus took the cup of red wine and gave thanks for it. And he said, this is my blood poured out for many. Sealing the new agreement between God and man. And he said that this was a new promise God was making. And... He said, take and drink and remember me. All right. Thank you for sharing communion with us. When the meal was over, Jesus and his friends went to a place called the Mount of Olives. Jesus said sadly, soon you will all leave me. Peter felt bad. Even if all the others leave you, I won't, he said. Jesus looked at his dear friend and said quietly, Before the sun rises, you will pretend you don't know me three times. Peter said, Jesus, I love you too much to ever do that to you. And all of the disciples said the same thing. This story is found in the Bible and is about one of Jesus' friends who let him down. Peter went everywhere with Jesus. He was one of his helpers, and Jesus was his friend. I will never leave you, Peter said to Jesus. But Jesus told Peter, Tonight, before the rooster crows, you will tell people that you don't even know me three times. After the soldiers took Jesus away, Peter was scared. He watched from a safe place. You were with Jesus, a girl said. I don't know what you're talking about, he replied. Another person saw Peter. This man was with Jesus, he said. I was not, said Peter. I don't even know him. More people said, you are one of Jesus' followers. You talk exactly like him. I tell you, I don't even know him, said Peter. Then he heard a rooster crow. Peter remembered how Jesus had said, tonight, before the rooster crows, you will tell people that you don't even know me three times. Peter went away and cried as he knew he had let Jesus down. Peter was sorry he hadn't told everyone that Jesus was his friend. Later, when Jesus rose from the dead, Peter told everyone about Jesus. Will you tell people that Jesus is your friend too? So in this lesson, we learned to be humble. What does that mean? Um... It means that you're not too good for any of the tasks that are in front of you. Um, Jesus showed us this by washing his disciples' feet. And Peter pointed out, you're not going to wash my feet. This is a job of a servant, not an important leader like you are. But Jesus was showing and teaching love and humility by washing his disciples' feet. So that's one thing we learned. Um, We also learned that even though Jesus knew that Judas was going to betray him uh, before the night was over after they ate the last supper, um, he didn't turn against him, did he? He didn't throw him out and say, oh, you you know, you're going to do you're going to say bad things about me and and um, you can't eat supper with us. He didn't say that. He still had love for Judas and um, 
and the rest of the disciples as well. So we all, we learned that we need to love everyone, right? And we also learned that Jesus created a new covenant with God and his people. Well, what does that mean? Uh, before, before Jesus, uh, the Jewish people celebrated the Passover. We learned that. And the wine that they drank at Passover represented the sacrifice of a lamb. And uh, I don't know if you remember the story of when uh, they put the, the blood of the lamb over the, the doorway of people's homes. And uh, whoever had the blood of the lamb over the doorway was passed over of death. So that's where the Passover name comes from. and uh, But now the new representation of the wine at Passover is the sacrifice or the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus gave his life on the cross so that um, he would take all of our sin of the world, not just you and me, but of everyone. And um, so we participate in communion and we constantly um, remind ourselves of the sacrifice that Jesus um, made and we want to give thanks for that. So that's why we do the communion. And uh, so how can we make our light shine by learning this story? Well, number one, we can be humble, right? Uh, we can love everyone. And you can tell people about Jesus dying on the, the cross for your sins so that you can have everlasting life in heaven. So let's try this, right? Let's pray. Thank you, God, for teaching us to be humble. Thank you for loving us so much that you gave your only son to die on the cross to save us from sin. Please help us to be better servants to you and help us make our light shine bright. Amen. Everybody, you have a great week. Let your light shine. Be the light. Yes, be God's light. Is burning brighter.